Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Money Mondays. I'm here co-hosted with the real Tarzan. As you guys all well know, Tarzan gets over 200 million views a month on social. I'm going to have to change that number soon because one of your videos got like 92 million views by itself last week. So the number, the price is going up. <laughs> the numbers are going up. Um, but here on the Money Mondays, we do three topics. We cover how to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity. Today's going to be more of a special edition episode. We're going to be talking about live events, how you can make money from live events, how you can build a network from live events, why I throw live events, and I'm going to showcase every event that I've thrown, not all of them because there's been a couple hundred, every brand of event that I've thrown, why I do it, how I do it, how do I make money from it, how do I not make money from it, how do I build connections from it, etc. So you guys can do the same thing and it not feel so overwhelming. Sometimes you might be sitting there like, wow, there's 300 people at that event or there's 50 people at that event or that event's 100,000 or that event's free. Like, how does he do it? Why does he do it? I'm going to walk you through real life from everything from charity events, free events, business events, conferences, masterminds, and everything in between so you guys can pick and choose what might fit for you or someone in your circle, someone in your world. You might not want to throw an event, but after this, you might want to. That's the goal here. Tarzan, last night, we had a birthday party here at the ranch, at the wild jungle, 26 acres, Three or four hundred guests, 180 animals. Tell them about the birthday party last night. It was sick. By the way, it is Dan's birthday right today. Right second. Yeah. Right now, everybody wish Dan in the comments below a happy freaking birthday. And I'm Go here melting socials. the RV <laughs> with you guys to make sure we have an episode every Monday. It was epic, man. It was so cool to see all your friends out, all your coworkers, all your business partners come through and celebrate your, your special day. Uh, everybody's walking around, like, giving so many compliments on the ranch. We had such a sick setup. Uh, Lori went through the party, like, set up different booths. We had popcorn machines and taco stands and big, oh, Kane had, like, 15 giant security guards <laughs> at every station. It was so sick, man. Uh, we had floaties in the pools. Oh, man, someone went swimming un unintentionally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but, yeah, man, it was an awesome day yesterday. Um, big event, one of our biggest events we ever had here in the year we've been here. It just made the year, too, since we've been here. And, uh, man, it's been sick, bro. It's yeah. our one-year anniversary here at the ranch. Uh, we bought this place August of last year, 2022. Uh, this property was $6.6 .6 million. We spent over $3 million in build-out so far and growing. It's about six figures a month. And we like to be very transparent. That's why I talked to you through how much is my house, how much is my events, how much is my cost. The Money Mondays is meant to have blunt discussion about money because normally it'd be rude to say how much you bought your house for. It'd be rude to talk about your salary or rude to talk about how much your event costs or your birthday costs. We're here to tell you it's not rude because what if you're thinking about buying property? What about you're throwing an event or you're throwing a birthday party? You feel overwhelmed. And if you might have heard something on the Money Mondays that you're like, whoa, I could do an event for free or whoa, I'm not crazy for spending this much money on my birthday or this much money on a charity event or this much money on X, Y, Z because you hear it here from the, us on the Money Mondays and hopefully you guys can have these blunt discussions about money where it doesn't sound rude when we say I spent X on this or I invested this or I did this or this cost this much, etc. because it's not rude. It's information. I'm not doing it for a pat on the back. I don't need to flex on you guys. I'm here to show you guys and w walk you through real life situations of like, hey, throwing a birthday party costs money. Hey, throwing an event, a business event costs money. Throwing a charity event can cost money or you can do it this way and do it for free. So we're going to walk you through literally today how to do things for free, cheap, affordable, kind of expensive, super expensive. So you guys can pick and choose if any of this fits for you. But to be blunt, we need to have these conversations. We need to talk about money. People are so shy about it. Like, oh, you got a cool new car. It's okay to say that car costs 140 grand, five grand, 12 grand, 30 grand. Because what if that person's thinking about that car? And people are like, oh, I can't believe you said you spent 50 grand on a car. Why? It's factual. Oh, you spend three grand a month on rent. Why is that rude to say you spend three grand a month on rent? That's how much you spend on rent. That's factual. And too often people may have this media or whatever happened in our culture over the course of time just made it seem like it's rude to have these discussions like how much is a salary? How much is taxes? How much is rent? How much is your lease? Like we have to have these discussions because otherwise... We're just going to keep fighting 8% a year infl inflation and people are going to be broke. And they're going to wonder why. And we're going to keep seeing athletes and influencers and people go bankrupt that make millions of dollars and they go bankrupt and they don't know why. And it could have been solved by information and communication. And that's what we're here for on the Money Mondays. Also, keep in mind, every Monday at 4 o'clock, we have the moneymondays.com. It's a live Zoom call. So we actually do live Q&A every Monday, 4 o'clock PST. You can go to the moneymondays.com. You can sign up there. And that's where myself, Tarzan, and we bring in other business coaches to come in there and talk through real life situations. So it's about 40 minutes of like a speech and then 20 minutes of live Q&A where we bring up the guests that are watching 
on the Zoom call. It's not meant for thousands of people to be on there anytime soon. Right now, it's just a couple hundred people and there's about 40 to 200 on average that jump on there and we just have these live Q&A discussions. So if you ever want to go there, go to moneymondays.com. We donate all the extra proceeds to the world's largest toy drive, which is a big event. So let's start off the event discussions. Toy drive started off with eight people at Hubble Studio in downtown Los Angeles wrapping toys on the floor. Literally just eight of us sitting there just wrapping toys. Didn't cost us any money. We just sat on the floor, had everybody bring over toys. And it wasn't that many. It was maybe a couple thousand toys, 2,000 toys, which is a lot. But it wasn't that many when you think about what it's scaled to. Year two, there's like 17 people. Year three, there's like 40 people. And now we have hundreds of volunteers that I don't even need to show up because there's so many volunteers and we can do it in multiple cities. You guys can do your own toy drive or back to school day, report card day, Thanksgiving food drive, etc. without a dollar. Let me walk you through how and how it led to us then breaking the Guinness Book World Records for the largest toy drive in history last year. And then this year for our 10 year anniversary, we're doing 10 cities from December 2nd through December 17th across the country, which is insanity. When you think about just nine years ago, it was eight of us on the floor. All right. How do you do a charity event for free? Okay. First things first, you pick a cause. If you pick a cause that is financially related, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Meaning, if you're raising money for cancer, leukemia, Alzheimer's, these are very important causes, but those are not causes that you can go there in person and help, right? You can't go there to a hospital and be like, hey, I'm here to report for duty and help with Alzheimer's or leukemia. That's not going to be what happens. That's physical cash. So those are important to raise money for. You can still apply what I'm about to talk to you about. But what I'm really going to talk about is when it comes to like feeding the homeless, getting toys for kids, orphanages, women abuse shelters, teen abuse shelters, things like that, that are real life in-person situations that you can apply your time and energy into. And money could be third or fourth place. Money is still important, but it's not necessary for you to have the money part. You could be the conduit. The conduit means you are the energy. So let's say Tarzan wants to raise money for obviously saving the animals. He can pick a date. So let's just walk through a real life Tarzan example. Tarzan says, I want to save the animals in Brazil. He just came back from Brazil. And I know if I raise this much amount of money, I can help fight with the poachers. And this is something that he can go to in person and he can rally the troops there to help fight poachers. Us as normal civilians are not going to go there and fight with Tarzan side by side fighting the poachers. Tarzan will end up do it, but that takes capital. Let's walk through a real life situation. How can he raise capital and use his influence to get other people to use their influence and hopefully get capital. So he picks a location. So in this case, let's use the ranch as the location. So we're at Wild Jungle, W-Y-L-D, Wild Jungle. He says, okay, this date, let's call it September 1st, which is today. September 1st is going to be the event. Tarzan's going to raise money to fight the poachers in Brazil. It takes normally three to six weeks to really rally the troops for an event. You do not need two, three, four, five, six months. Could you use that much time? You can, but most of the like energy and action happens those last two, three, four weeks right before the event is when most people are like confirming to attend, donating, etc. Sponsors, volunteers are really going to get into it that month of the event. If you want to be, you know, really well prepared and do it three, four, five, six months in advance, God bless you. Go for it. Most of our events, we're really planning those three to six weeks prior because that's when most of the action happens. So Tarzan says, okay, September 1st, guys, I'm going to do an event at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Why is it three hours? Well, when you do an event for three hours, it makes people have some scarcity of time frame of when they need to be there, or they can come beforehand and drop off things or bring some, some energy. But when you have an event that's open-ended, just saying like, okay, it's from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., it's hard to get everyone together at the same time frame. So whether you want to do a daytime event, nighttime event, that's up to you. But the concept is usually try to keep it to three or four hours to make people have that like condensed time frame of when they need to be there. Even from my birthday party yesterday, I said it's from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's a pretty big window because I was thinking about traffic. But I'll, obviously, I let the event go until 10 p.m. because I knew that people are going to be late, people driving from different cities, etc. You want to make your key window three to four hours. And it's okay if people come early and then they stay late. But you give them a key window, that's when they're going to show up. All right, Tarzan's fighting the poachers. Sat, uh, he's going to do it on September 1st. It's going to be at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. What he wants people to do is rally the troops. They're going to, he's going to literally ask them, and this is you guys in this scenario, text them, post on social media, hey, bring your friends, family, and followers over to the ranch on September 1st at 6 p.m. Everyone, if you can, you can either bring this type of supply or this type of money or post about this. 
Here's the link. Have you noticed that Tarzan hasn't spent a dollar yet? The same thing can apply for you guys. You pick a venue. He happens to own this ranch, but if you pick a venue like Hubble Studio, uh, a car showroom, a warehouse, one of your friend's offices, one of your friend's houses, and pick that venue, try to get it for free or cheap. Most of them will give it to you for free because you're doing something for charity. So if you're raising money for homelessness, if you're raising money for kids, raising money to fight the poachers, most venues will give it to you for free, not on a weekend. Try to get it on a Sunday through Thursday, specifically more Monday through Monday through Wednesday, because most venues are not busy on those days. And so they're not going to be like, oh, well, I'm double booked out for the next two years on a Friday. Of course they are. They're not booked on a Tuesday. No, no, co no company's booking them out on Tuesday. There's no weddings on Tuesday night. Like they're open on Tuesdays. And so when you think about a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night, you'll have less friction to book a venue for this. And most of them will give it to you for free if they know you're doing it for a good cause. This same thing applies to business conferences when they're on the smaller scale, which we'll get into afterwards. So Tarzan picks, let's say he's not doing the ranch. He picks another venue. He gets it for free. It's going to be at 6 p.m. The same concept applies. It's picking a date, picking a time, picking a location, and making very clear steps of what you want people to do. Charity feels overwhelming because it's complicated. People are like, I don't know where the money's going. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who's going to do what. I don't know what I should do, etc. That's why if you noticed this week, The Rock and Oprah put a video together, a joint post together. It's pretty much one of the biggest engagement posts I've ever seen for charity because people want to help in Maui. They want to help Hawaii, right? There's a travesty of what happened out there and it doesn't feel like it's getting the recognition it should get from the government and from a lot of people. And so they joined together. They donated $10 million to show, hey, we're not just raising money from you guys. They put up $10 million and they said, here's the link. And as the money comes in, we're immediately going to deliver it out to people directly in this city and you're going to see it. That is clear cut charity, which is what I've lived my life on. My model citizen fund, this has been around for 12 years now. We make backpacks for the homeless with 150 emergency supply items inside. I made it so that people can see I'm physically giving out backpacks or they can give out backpacks on their own. They don't need to buy my backpacks. The Trina's Kids Foundation, when you see the Thanksgiving food drive, the toy drive, etc., they can visually see that we're handing it to the people, the 400 families that show up every year after year for those food drives and toy drives, etc. Visually on camera, photos and videos, they're going to see us hand it out. That's what The Rock and Oprah did. They're like, this is a clear cut way that as you donate money to this foundation, we will give it to the people. All right, so you're picking a location, you're picking a time, you're picking a day, and you're giving clarity of what you want people to do. How do you do that? You make a one page flyer. This flyer can be done by somebody you know. You can go on what's called Fiverr.com. Fiverr.com costs, you guessed it, five bucks. Pay someone five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks if you want to like over incentivize them, and they will make you a flyer that same day. Okay? You can also ask some friends, post on social, hey, is anybody good at web design or graphic design? Somebody will make you a flyer because it's charity related. They want to. So somebody that would normally charge will do it for free. So they make you a one page flyer. What does this flyer say? Not a lot. Keep it very clear. Do not put a ton of words on this flyer because you want the human eye to see it and be able to understand right away what is it and then be able to share that information quickly. If you write way too much content, people won't read it. Just like if you write someone a three page text message, they're probably not going to read it. Keep your text messages short. Keep your emails short. Keep things concise because we live in an ADD, ADD society. And so you want to keep it clear and concise. So this flyer should say, at Wild Jungle. Here's the address, 6 p.m., September 1st, bring XYZ. Same thing applies to you. If it's bringing toys, bringing food, bringing canned goods, bringing supplies, bringing sleeping bags, whatever it is, bringing backpacks, whatever it is that you're doing charity related, be very clear about the time, date, location, what you want them to bring or what you want them to do. What you want them to do is post about it. You might think, oh, my friends only have 300 followers and 1,200 followers and 6,000 followers and 4,000 followers. Yeah, but you got 300 of them. Do you know what 300 times 3,000 is? A lot. And then if they post it and those people repost it, what happens? You could go viral. And if you don't go viral, you still got hundreds of thousands of views or millions of views, even though you're in Wichita, Kansas, and you only have 300 followers, those 300 people care about Wichita, Kansas. So if you're helping out the homeless in Wichita, Kansas, they're going to post about it. And all of a sudden, this guy that owns all the car dealerships, Brandon Steven, posts it. And now a million people see it because he posted it. And then she posted it. And that person, now the mayor shows up. The newspaper shows up. The freaking news, TV news camp, uh, anchor shows up because you posted it. 
and then Brandon Steven posted it and he owns all the car dealerships and all the media follows him and then boom he owns the hockey team the hockey team reposts it the hockey team shows up to your event and you're just the 16 year old kid with 300 followers snowball effect I want that to resonate for a second you know why because it's real life I'm not making this stuff I've watched people do it I've watched kids do this I've watched senior citizens do it I've watched people with no money do it I watch homeless people, actual homeless people, take a cell phone that was a prepaid cell phone. They have no home. They have no actual phone number. They have a prepaid cell phone that someone gave them, and they threw a homeless event that had 400 people show up because they built up just a couple hundred followers, and all of a sudden, they end up getting like ten or 20,000 followers from them just sharing and telling people, and then it became an interesting story. I reposted it. Boom. He gets like four or 5,000 followers. I post it again. He jumps to 10,000. Then my friends all start posting it because it's an interesting story. Now this guy's got 20,000 followers on a prepaid phone and he's homeless. Fast forward, the guy actually has an apartment. He got subsidized for 1,200 bucks a month in rent. So it became a great story that he was out there helping other people with no intention for himself and someone stepped in and got him rent for two years and prepaid it for him from a prepaid cell phone. So there is no excuse for you guys. I want to be really clear and really blunt. We're always going to have blunt discussions with you guys on this show. Nothing can hold you back if you have a passion for something. Nothing. Nothing. Because I'm going to break down the steps of how you actually do it. This is not like the secret, right? It's a great to have visualization. It's an important book. And I love the movie, The Secret. It's important for you to visualize. That's important. But we're going to talk with you the actual steps to get there. So it's not just a dream. That's not just like, oh, I want to throw a charity event, but I never can. And I, I can't do that. It's too overwhelming. Yes, you can. We're going to walk you through it. So you picked your location. You made a flyer. It says 6 p.m. It says the wild jungle. It tells you what time to be there. It tells them what to bring. It's, it's showtime. What do I do now that you have the flyer? You're going to post this flyer, but not every single day. You do not need to like shove it in their faces every single day to post the flyer. You need to post about it. Then you need to be DMing it to people and asking them to post. You might think, ah, oh, that feels awkward. What is awkward about helping a charity cause that you care about? I don't want to ask for money. Why don't you want to ask for money for a charity cause that you care about? What is the point of money then? Why do you have friends that make any kind of money or especially are rich and not physically ask them to donate to something that you care about? You're not, it's not benefiting you outside of the karma and the emotional brownie points. You're doing it because you care about the poachers in Brazil or the homeless people in LA or the homeless people in Wichita, Kansas or the kids. Whatever the thing is for you, you care about that thing. Do not be shy about asking for help. People actually get more emotionally attached to you when you ask for help on something than if they ask you for a favor. Okay, so you've got your flyer, you've got your date, you've got your location, you've got your time, you got your cause. You start DMing people, you're emailing people, you're doing some phone calls, you're showing up. You're now actively recruiting people to help you with your mission. What happens is the snowball effect that Tarzan just talked about is a snowball can turn into an avalanche. Because if you do this and you interact with 100 people and 200 people and 300 people, the math just adds up real fast when they interact with zero to five people each. Some of them will be zero. They're not going to do anything. Don't get mad at them for it. That's just, their, that's just them. Your goal is to outperform it, meaning you're not dependent on one person, five people, 10 people. You're out there just trying to interact with hundreds and hundreds of people so that someone becomes the snowball turned into an avalanche. You're telling the local news, local radio stations, the local baller you might know or you don't know, and it gives you an excuse to hit up anyone you want because it's for charity. You can literally hit up the, the high school quarterback, the NFL quarterback that used to live there, the TV news anchor, and anybody in between, the local zillionaire that owns up whatever, you can message them because it's about charity. And by doing that, you're now building your network. So there is a benefit for you. That's another thing people have this weird thing to talk about for charity. There is an actual benefit for you, and that's okay. You're not trying to make money from it. It just happens to be that you're building relationships from you physically trying to help people in charity. And if you build relationships and you get more famous and you get richer and things happen for your life by this, by default of it, that just means you're going to do more charity stuff. So let's not beat around the bush about it. It's okay for you to benefit from the fact that charity is happening because you build your life and you're going to build more charity. As long as you have it, do it with intention and you're not doing it for financial gain, by default, you will have financial gain. By default, you will have more fame, more connections, more relationships, et cetera. Your life will be better by doing charity. And it's okay to say that. Now, you start to interact with 100 people, 200 people. Everyone's messaging. 
They're all posting about it. They're talking about it. And they're going to bring XYZ supply or money to your event. And they're posting about this thing. What happens on the day of the event? On the day of the event, this is where you have decisions to make. You can be the front person if you want to be the one that's going to do this. If you're going to do this multiple times, I would prefer you be the front person or someone close to you. Husband, wife, brother, sister, family member, etc. that cares about this. You need someone to be like the spokesperson for it. If you don't want to be that, that's perfectly okay. I'm not here to like change you from an introvert to an extrovert. But someone next to you has to be close to you. has to be the one that they latch on to. They have to be the, the hero, basically, of the story that's leading the charge. If you're on the fence about it, then you should be it. Meaning if you're not a full introvert, you should be the one doing it. So why do you need that? They need to trust someone. There has to be a face to it. If I said, hey, I'm going to give $100,000 to Tarzan to go fight poachers in Brazil, I'll sleep at night knowing he spent 100000 to the penny to do it because it's Tarzan and he'll, he'll die on the streets if he has to in Brazil to fight poachers, right? If you believe in something and you know someone believes in it, you, you need that face. And so Tarzan being the face of something, of fixing something for animals, I know he's, gonna, he's willing to die out there in the streets to, to fight for what his mission is. Same thing with me for the homeless. You know I care about the homeless situation because you see me for 12 years in a row posting, helping the homeless. So you want to have a face to the charity and it should be you. But again, if you're an introvert, I'm not here to try to sway you on that part. Find someone next to you that you trust to be the face of that that actually cares about the same topic. All right, the day of the event arrives. You need to have photos and videos throughout the day because if you plan to do this a second time, I can guarantee you the second one will be three, four, five, six, seven times bigger because the first one has content and proves that you did it, right? You raised 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, 500 grand. The, the financial dollars are actually all relative. There are times where I see people raise $12,000 for something that gets the same amount of engagement when someone raises a million dollars for something. The money part is all relative to the situation. So do not feel like, oh, I, I only, can only raise six grand or I can only raise 20 grand. That's huge. It's fantastic. Do not worry about if someone else is donating a million dollars or 100 grand, 50 grand. Completely irrelevant. You doing your part of raising six grand or 12 grand, whatever, is huge for that charity. And more importantly than the actual capital is the media. You now have people for the whole month that have been posting about this charity situation or this thing and bringing awareness to it far bigger than you. Think about it. If Tarzan posts it and all of a sudden 15 million people see something, he's not going to charge you to post about a charity. He gets bombarded by people asking that he doesn't know if they're actually serious about it or if they're trying to get money from it. So he has to be picky about it. But think about the concept. If he sees something that fits his life and believes the person, the spokesperson, or I see something that fits my world and I believe in the spokesperson, and one of us posts it or donates to it or shares it with our friends, the butterfly effect is there. You're going to have the situation and opportunity to do that by reaching out to lots of people along the journey for that event. During the event, photo and video. You do not need a fancy camera. If you happen to have a friend or someone that wants to do it for free or cheap, have them come film. But phone, cell phones work great. It's not going to be your fancy edited video, but it's going to do the job for you guys for your charity. During that time, you cannot be shy about making sure to get photo and video of the scene, of the event, of the, that, because, again, it's going to help you raise money for the cause that day and especially the next day as people, more and more people see it. But also, it's going to help you for your next event. All right. Why do all this stuff? One, doing charity work gives you the good karma points. Ding, ding, ding. It's useful for you. The networking part of it is useful for you. For your soul, you will feel like a better person. You will actually be a better human by doing it because we have a very short window on this earth. And people say, I want to leave it better than I came. We'll do it. And I see people talk about it all the time. Let's do it. And that's why I'm so aggressive about posting about charity all the time. I, my, my birthday post today said, the only thing I want for you guys to do is do more charity. That's it. I want the butterfly effect. If I got seven people to go do more charity and then they get seven more people, then the butterfly effect is there. But if I get 700 people to do it or 7,000 people to do it, think about the butterfly effect of that. So just talking about charity, doing charity, and you doing that and you going out there will cause more people to do charity, whether they donate to your cause or another cause, the brownie points are there. All right, let's switch gears. Same concept for a business event. Why should you throw a local business event? You can choose an industry that you're already in or that you're interested in and have 30 to 100 people show up in a few weeks from now and all of a sudden you become the man or the woman in that category. Let me walk you through. So let's say you love luxury cars. 
You're like, oh my God, I love luxury cars. I love Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches. These are so cool. But I'm 15 years old. I can't even have a driver's license. You, my friend, could have hundreds of people show up with Ferraris and Bentleys and Porsches and all these cool cars to your event 26 days from now. You want to know how I know that? Because I know a 15-year-old in Salt Lake City that has 400 cars show up, which means 1,000 or 2,000 people. 400 cars show up every month. Did I mention he was 15 years old? So when I talk to you about this part, of business conferences or business events or niche industries, you have literally no excuse because I literally know a 15-year-old kid who gets hundreds of people to show up, hundreds of cars to show up to his event. All right, how do you do it? You pick a location. So let's say you want to be around a bunch of people with luxury cars. Great. You pick a location like a mall or a parking lot of a mall or a stadium or an arena in their parking lot. You do this on a non-event day. They're not going to give it to you on a Super Bowl Sunday or on like a football day. But a lot of venues will give it to you on, on a Saturday or Sunday morning. They'll allow you to take over the parking lot or just one section because it's not going to take over the entire mall, right? It brings them business, so they like it, um, and it's a useful thing for you to have. It's a useful thing for them to have knowing that 300 cars are going to show up in their parking lot. So you say, okay, Sunday morning, 9 a.m., I want all the Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and cool cars to register. Register at events.com. You can use Eventbrite or other sites. I like events.com. They didn't pay me for that. I just like the company. I've always used them. They're going to register at events.com or they can just show up, bring your cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, whatever cars you want, Sunday, 9 a.m. to this mall's parking lot. Okay. How much have you spent? Zero dollars and zero cents. And notice everything I've talked about so far in both Tarzan's charity cause, the this event now, it doesn't cost anything. You already have a cell phone. You already have social media. Your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your Snapchat, your TikTok, your threads, your YouTube are all free, 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 and free. Whether you have a couple hundred followers on each platform, multiply that by six or seven, and they have followers, it adds up real quick. So Sunday, 9 a.m., mall parking lot. You're going to do a cars event. Name it whatever you want that's cool, that's easy for people to share and talk about. All you're doing is the same concept I said for the charity. You're reaching out on Instagram, threads, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., to anyone you know that has cool cars or knows people with cool cars. You can also fast forward that by going and meeting with or calling or DMing or emailing local high-end car dealerships. If there's a Ferrari dealership or a Bentley or a Porsche or whatever, or there's like a mixed car dealership that's just like a cool like wires only. Remember he was on our podcast? There's a cool one like wires only that has a bunch of different cars. Get a hold of them. They want to promote. They want to be there. Why wouldn't wires only want to have seven of his cars out of his freaking hundred cars at a car show? He would. You know why? Because you're going to bring 100 or 200 potential customers for him. And he's going to set up a wires only booth there with seven luxury cars. And he's going to be the man there. He's not going to charge you anything. He's, he might pay you to set up there, right? Because he wants to set up his cool cars and have a booth there and potentially get clients. Notice he have not spent a dollar. And now you got one of the most famous guys in the car world history with his own TV show paying you or just showing up to bring his cars and you're 15 years old. See where I'm going with this? This is a real life situation. You can right this second decide I want to throw an event and you can decide what niche you want to be in. Because the same thing applies for real estate, cannabis, cryptocurrency, fashion, beauty, whatever you want, food. And you just message people in that category. So if you want to throw a fashion event, you just start messaging all the people in fashion. You're like, hey, Dave and John, I want you to be there. Hey, I love that clothing brand. Amiri, Mike Amiri, can you show up? Hey, I love your shoes. Can you show up? Like, You just message them all and they want to show up. You know why I know? I'm an investor in a company called SneakerCon. SneakerCon has 450,000 people a year show up to bring their sneakers to conferences. The founder is around 30 years old, but he started this over a decade ago. You can do the math. And now he's got a show everywhere around the planet, he does it in Japan, LA, and everywhere in between, getting 12 to 20,000 people to show up with their sneakers. They pay him to show up with their sneakers. You can do the exact same thing in any category that you want. If you want to do fashion, cannabis, crypto, sports, whatever it is that you like, luxury cars, really, it doesn't matter. You can pick a niche and start inviting people to a local parking lot, a warehouse, a gallery, whatever, and throw your own event. All it takes is time 
and energy of reaching out to people and not being scared to ask. You can't be scared to ask. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. If you don't reach out to people, it's not going to show up. If you reach out to them and they post about it and they talk about it, they will show up. Why do this? You automatically get to become the man or the woman in a category. Remember, you're 15 years old. You picked a venue. It's Sunday, 9 a.m. You made a flyer. You invited a bunch of people. You DM'd wires only. He's like, yeah, sure. I'll bring seven cars and all my clients. You wire this guy in the car space, that lady in the car space. You just start messing everyone that has cool cars. You search hashtags for Lamborghini, hashtag Ferrari, hashtag Porsche. You look at all the race car accounts. You look at all the luxury car accounts. And you just start looking through. You're like, well, wow, this is cool. There's an account called Autoplay. I just scroll through Autoplay and look at, oh, they tag everyone. Oh, why don't I just message the people that they tag? Oh, wait, there's comments of people like, oh, I have a Lamborghini. Ding, you DM them. Oh, yeah, I got a Porsche and I got four Porsches. Bing, you DM them. You know how much it costs to DM them? It rhymes with zero. And they already told you they have a Porsche and Lamborghini, etc. And they're posting on car-related pages on Twitter, Instagram, and every platform. You can reach out to them. <clears throat> the point of the story is you can do all these things from your boxers at home at 15 years old and put together a 100, 200, 300-person event full of cool cars, cool real estate, sports cards, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And it does not cost you much money, time, or energy. The more time and energy you put into it, the better it is. Not necessarily the more money. It's not much for you to spend because you're rallying them together to show up to this event. Now, as you do that, you could actually make this for commerce, make this for money. Because like I said with SneakerCon, 450,000 people a year paying 20 bucks, 40 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks for VIP to show, the, show up there. You can do the math. Let's, let's call it 40 bucks times 450,000. It's a lot. Plus all the booths, plus all the sponsors, all the vendors. The food sales, parking lot sales, like you can do the math on how much SneakerCon is making and why eBay came in and acquired a part of our company last year. These are kids that started selling boots for a sneaker conference in a local gymnasium. And now they have tens of thousands of people every single month showing up. So none of this is a concept or a theory. This is real life situations of what you could do if you want to turn an event into a business or to build your relationships. When people say, Dan's the most connected person I know, that literally just comes from me throwing events all the time. I speak at events, I go to events, I throw charity events, I go to more events, I go to more events. And I've, I've been doing that for 20 years and a lot the last 12 years, it's just math and time. If I go to five events a month and then eight events a month and six events and 10 events and there's 300 to 1,000 people at every event, you can do the math if I've done that every single month for the last decade. It's not rocket science, it's just time and energy. I put in the time to go to all these events I throw a lot of events, and so I meet a lot of people. And what's also interesting is when you throw an event like a business conference or a race cars meetup, you're only going to meet their best people. No one shows up like, hey, meet my 11-year-old that I wanted to bring over or meet my friend that doesn't do much. They're like, hey, meet my friend that has six Lamborghinis. Hey, is it okay if I bring my friend? She's got, she owns two car dealerships. They don't bring you like the random like, hey, meet this person. It doesn't happen. Because they know that you're throwing a business event or you're throwing a race car event or you're throwing a real estate event or whatever. <clears throat> they're only going to bring their best people to you and you are edified because you're the one hosting that event. Now, let's get into it real quick. I think we only have, yeah. Um, we like to keep these to 40 minutes because the average workout is 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And the average commute to work is 45 minutes. So we like to keep these episodes to 40 minutes. So last quick segment. segment. I'm going to walk you through price points. So... We have Elevator Nights. Elevator Nights has been completely free. I've thrown it 53 times. Now we're going to be throwing it even more often because of that joint venture, the big merger, the big investment that I just did with Aspire Tour and all their companies. Elevator Nights is a conference for 300 to 1,000 guests, completely free. I walk through Elevator Nights on my social all the time so that people could throw their own version of Elevator Nights in their cities for free or for cheap. You can also do it to make money. You could throw a two or 300 person event and charge 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks for a ticket, have people pay you a thousand bucks, 2,000, 3,000 dollars for a booth. And all of a sudden you have a, a business that can make you 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand per event. And you can do them all the time. You can do them monthly, quarterly, whatever you want. So when you see elevator nights, I could charge for it. I just do it for free because I want to. You can make the exact same style event and charge a little bit for it. And you'll be surprised when you do 300 people at 50 bucks a ticket. It adds up quick when you also have sponsors, vendors, et cetera. We have the Aspire Tour. That's AspireTour.com. We throw an event every single month across the country. 
two to three thousand people per event. We have been sold out every single time, which is why I'm excited about investing with them to now scale it. We also throw Aspire Summit. You can still go through AspireTour.com. We're doing one December 5th and 6th in Atlanta. We have 5,000 people coming there. We got Kevin Hart. We got Rick Rouse. We got a bunch of fun surprises there. A Rod. All going to be there speaking and performing uh, in Atlanta. We have Houston sold out, Chicago sold out, San Diego's oversold out. We got to figure out what to do. We need more seats. And so Aspire Tour is 50 bucks to 400 bucks. That's an affordable event for people to go there and have two or 3,000 people learning about business. We have for $10,000 Operation Black Site where you can come for the weekend or pay 20 grand for the year and go to three weekends. OperationBlackSite.com is where you get military training and fight training from the most badass people on the planet. The guy fighting Conor McGregor, hopefully December 16th, Michael Chandler. That's the guy that's going to be on the mats with you teaching you how to fight. Guys like Tim Kennedy, Ray Cashcare, Bedros Koulian, all these guys that are ex-military, et cetera, Navy SEALs, all these guys, they're the ones actually teaching you how to shoot. So OperationBlackSite.com, it's a great experience. We do it right here at the ranch. We have a couple acres dedicated to military obstacle courses, shooting range. We use airsoft guns for shooting range. We have a whole gym here for fighting, training, et cetera. Learn how to get out of handcuffs, all these things. That one is 10 grand for a weekend or 20 grand for the year. Go to three weekends and we do a bunch of uh, training courses in between every single month. For $15,000, we have what's called Money Is, the Money Is Mastermind. Money Is is for people that want to learn about money, how to invest, how to fix their accounting, 401k, how to redirect self, you know, IRA, Roth IRA. Like there's a lot of things that might be confusing to people. They go to the Money Is Mastermind. It's 15 grand. It's for the year. And we have these multiple weekends throughout the year where you get to learn from Andrew Cordell and Eddie Wilson, the two guys that I did the big investment merger with. Andrew Cordell and Eddie Wilson are there actually teaching and training you about money and what to do with money, how to work with money for you and your family. For $25,000, we have the Power Room Mastermind. Power Room, we have about 220 members of that, 300 in the other one. So 520 members combined between those two masterminds. The Power Room Mastermind is mostly for CEOs, high C-level executives, people doing 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million in revenue that are networking together. And those Power Room Masterminds are very powerful because you have a bunch of other CEOs and business people in the room to network with. We then jump all the way up to $100,000. It's $100,000 for the year for the 100 million mastermind experience. I started that in 2019, sold out all 100 spots at $100,000 each within three months of launching that. Why? Why would people pay $100,000 to be in the room? Because in that room, everyone else does at least five to $50 million in revenue. So they're paying for access, not necessarily to learn from Dan or the others. We have 22 instructors, but being in the room with 100 people that are also doing big numbers, big business executives, investing, charity, family offices, going through hard stuff, going through divorces, going through scaling, going through breakups and going through partnership situations and lawsuits. Like talking about the real stuff is what the power is of being in rooms like the masterminds. That's 100 million mastermind. That's 100mme.com. <clears throat> That's been sold out again for since 2019. Being in those rooms is powerful because of who's in the room. And then I bring in celebrity performances, celebrity interviews, Mark Wahlberg, Chris Jenner, Ludacris, Tyga, everyone that comes there to perform at these events. Why do I walk you through all that? There are different scales of the course of your life. And I call it an ascension model. You might want to do elevator nights, which is free. You might want to go to Aspire Tour, which is 50 to 400 bucks. It's all over the country. They're all, all the time. You might want to throw your own events. And I want you to see the website so you can replicate things for yourself. Come up with your own brand. Come up with your own thing. Because having these business conferences has changed my life forever. And it's changed the lives of a lot of people. Through these events, through the masterminds, the last two years, I was able to raise $44 million through what's called Elevator Syndicate to invest into other companies. So we invest 3 to $6 million into companies collectively with our mastermind members and our event attendees into these companies that then hire thousands and thousands of employees. That to me is like charity itself. Because we're, if I invest in Tarzan, he starts the Wild Jungle clothing brand and pet products and toys, etc., and he goes and hires 85 employees, those 85 employees to me is powerful because now your Tarzan's out there helping them make three grand, four grand, five grand, 10 grand, eight grand a month each times 85. That's powerful. And then he hires 200 people and then 500 people as wild jungle apparel and toys, pet products, et cetera, that he scales. That is better than charity to me because it's like the give someone a fish or teach them the fish by providing these salaries and providing jobs and providing those things. That's powerful to me. And so we've been able to deploy $44 million the last two years into companies like that similar to what Tarzan's building with Wild Jungle. And we're going to keep doing that every single year. And so as you're listening to this, 
keep in mind for yourself attending events is how you build a network speaking at events if that applies to you if you're in a niche and you you're ready to speak at those events that can actually lead to capital for you as well lead to payments as well going to charity events throwing charity events being out there and interacting with people in real life not just from your phone will build you a lot of relationships I do both. So you see me on social all the time. I'm the, I have no assistant. That's me in social. If you get a response from me or DM from me, that's Dan. I'm in there interacting because I want to build that in the social manner because most of the time that's where we are in social. But every single week I'm at an event. The next four days on my from my birthday right now, tonight, I'm leaving right the second to go be at an event. The next day I go to Tampa, Florida. Then I go to Fort Myers, Florida. Then I go to Miami. Then I go back to LA. Event, 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 event. I'm there for one day each. And it's worth it for me to scramble around the country to stress myself out for all these things because I enjoy it. So the stress is not stress to me. I enjoy the, pro I enjoy the process. So as you're listening to this, keep in mind for yourself, being at events is important. Interacting on social media is important. Interacting in human real life is how you build real relationships. I want to let Tarzan wrap it up and just talk about the things he's experienced and he heard about when it comes to these live events and the, his experience recently in Brazil, like interacting with people and why he does this traveling. Why does he go out there and do that? And then we're going to end the episode there. Well, being a student on this podcast for all these episodes, I'm learning so many things. And I hope you guys are also learning every episode to pick and choose what questions you have in your brain or what uh, sparks your interest in finance and events and charity. Because I have so many questions per episode and you answer them, you know. And um, with, with traveling, like you said, you know, the more events you go to, the more shoulders you rub, the more handshakes you do. The more I travel, the more conservation efforts I meet, the more people I meet doing ecotourism, the more connections I have with different government entities that are trying to save different animals. It, the list just goes on. And the more I go, the more intrigued I get, the more questions I have. I learned so much just recently about jaguars from a guy from Costa Rica. And if he didn't show me videos, I would have just called his bluff the whole time. I would have bet all my money in my pocket he was wrong. But he showed me something, and he's like, hey, this is what's happening out there in a the scientific world. This is what's happening with camera traps. And I'm like, wow. But all it takes is for you to sometimes close your mouth, open your ears, book that flight, ask those questions, and listen and learn. You know, And um, with projects like that that blow my mind, that's where I go and say, hey, I want to help this guy in Brazil. I want to help this guy in Costa Rica because they're doing something so new, so fresh that no one's seen or heard of yet or read yet in any book. And I want to be a person to be a part of that type of history. I'll die out there for the Jaguars. You'll die out there for the people in the streets that need help, you know, in charity aspects. So, uh, again, rubbing these shoulders, meeting these people, seeing the actual boots on the ground work, seeing the money being spent for people, for animals, for different anything. I'm all in for it. And I love to learn about it every single Monday. All right, guys. So you're listening to the Money Mondays. I would really like for you guys to obviously continue to share, comment, leave reviews. If you haven't left a review yet, that does help us a lot. We've stayed in the number one, the number one slot for 162 days in a row. And sometimes we'll drop to number two or three for like four hours or eight hours. And then you, you guys help us prop us back up. And that happens because you're helping us with the algorithm. By you leaving reviews, asking your friends to help us sharing the clips that you like, sharing the podcast episodes, forwarding it to your friends. All those things help us a lot to keep the podcast up there so we can have more discussions about money. The people around you, the people are near you, your friends, family, followers, have those discussions about money. Go visit us at themoneymondays.com if you want to be part of our live Zoom call sessions. And we will see you guys next Monday.